Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Real United States. I'm your host, Paul Campbell, and behind the camera, as always, is our cinematographer and my wife, Beverly Campbell. We're here back in Croswell, Michigan again for the 130th annual Croswell Agricultural Fair. The Croswell Agricultural Fair is a competition amongst people who bring their agricultural products, either livestock or produce that they've grown, to compete for the prize of the best in the area. Now often these are county fairs. This particular one is sort of a local regional fair rather than the Santa Lake County Fair. But people bring their products here to compete to prove that they had the best agricultural products that year. Now we're going to take you inside and try to show you around as much as we can. One of the things that's interesting about fairs here in the United States is they're often also associated with some sort of carnival. They bring in these mobile carnival rides and form what's called a midway for people to come in after they've viewed all the competitions and have some carnival food, ride the rides, have a good time, socialize and enjoy themselves. Now unfortunately we've got some rain today but the show must go on so we're gonna go ahead and show you the fair even though it's raining today and hopefully we'll have some special treats for you. So come along and join us inside. Oh, I was remiss in not mentioning that another thing that you'll see at many county fairs and local fairs like this are baked goods. A lot of people who bake or, or do some sort of creative cooking like that will enter their baked goods in competition. And these are all blue ribbon winners, meaning first place <clears throat> winners. These, uh, we've, got a, we've got cookies and we've got some sort of muffin here and a, some sort of a fruit bread. That is another thing, again, they're agricultural products, foodstuffs, but they're agricultural products that have been brought to compete. Now the weather's just miserable today. We've got lousy lighting, we've got rain. It's, it's not terribly cold, it's a little coolish. It's very muggy. One of the things about fairs here in the United States also is that it, what is on display is going to be largely dependent on the season. A lot of the agricultural products such as uh, produce are actually going to appear in later in the season, August, September, even October, where you're going to see squashes and pumpkins and corn and those sorts of things. So it's going to be very seasonal dependent what time of the year that the fair is held, depending on what things are competing. So I know how much you folks love the livestock. We did the livestock episode in front of Tractor Supply with some of the real exotic livestock. They have a small petting zoo here. I don't think that these are really competitive animals this time of year but they have brought their animals in to show off and be part of what is called a petting zoo. It gives young people an opportunity to come in and be exposed to animals if they don't live in a rural area, if they actually live in the city, and to be able to get to see these animals up close. And you can see this little guy is really friendly. Beautiful goat. He's gonna have a little piece of me there. <laughs> See the babies over climbing up on the chair here. And there's quite a few of them in here. Hi, buddy. Hello. Yes, here you go. Hey there. Come here. Come here. So you've got a miniature horse or pony, but technically a miniature horse. Now this squealing you're hearing is from, oh, I'm still filming there. The squealing you're hearing here is from these piglets. Mama Sal here has quite a, quite a brood. That was eight or 10 of them. Seven of them, something like that, seven or eight. Quite a large hog. I really don't want her to get a piece of me. They, uh, they, they don't normally bite, but they, they can, and that's not, that's not a critter you want to get a hold of you, especially if she's protecting that whole brood. Now, if I can get Bev to swing around here. Huh? 
baby animals, always a big draw at a petting zoo or a petting event like this. Young calves here, really young. Um, Bev, uh, Jersey, Jerseys, Guernseys, what do you suppose? Guernseys probably, yeah. I actually have a technical consultant just off camera here who's, uh, who's giving me some help. <laughs> and uh, they look pretty tired, but growing takes a lot of energy. And of course, ducks. Ducks, ducks, ducks. These little guys are still fuzzy. They haven't gotten their feathers yet. They're starting to develop a few tail feathers, but still really, really young ducks. I'm guessing probably, what, they're five weeks old, six weeks old? Yeah. Because they haven't really started to develop any feathers yet. Okay, we're gonna swing on over, I think, to one of the other barns now. But before we go, I know how much y'all love our chicken videos. And we have some baby chicks here. Look like they've only hatched maybe less than a week ago. They're being kept warm in this very humid weather under a light. So again, this is a wonderful opportunity for people who don't normally get to be around livestock or around animals to come and experience it. And it's, it's really very nice. It's, a, it's like $2 to get into the fair, $2 per person, very reasonable price. And it, it's really a nice learning opportunity, especially for the kids. Okay, now we've moved over into another one of the livestock barns. Again, it's really tough to get the lighting good in here. But here we have sheep and goats that have competed in the agricultural livestock show. And I don't see any ribbons up here, so I don't really know who's placed how. But you notice they're all newly shorn. Very clean. A little skittery there. Now these sheep here have not been shorn. Well, one of them has and one hasn't. Not, not quite as, as used to being fondled as the, uh, the petting zoo animals. Really nice, healthy animals though. And on the other side of the aisle is where all the goats are. And they have quite a, quite a variety of different goats. I'm not particularly familiar with this particular breed but they're, they're kind of cute. They're adorable. They look like little Holstein cows with, with horns. <clears throat> Only fuzzy. Little woolly Holsteins, but <laughs> obviously they're goats. We have some of the black-faced sheep here. And they're skittery, but they're, they're friendly enough. They're trying to see if I got anything good to give them. Fortunately, nobody's taken a piece of me yet. Again, this is a relatively small community fair. Uh, you may have seen the fairgrounds <clears throat> when we did the Croswell episode and we did a rolling footage driving past. It's not a huge fairgrounds, but it's not a very big community. I grew up in a very small town and I haven't actually been at the fair in decades. So this is kind of a nice trip down memory lane for me. Now something our viewers may not know is that when Beverly was a girl, she actually raised champion Holstein cattle. Beverly actually won second place in the state of Michigan with her Holstein cow back in the early 1970s. So, this is kind of a nice opportunity for her. I know she's very fond of the cattle. And uh, again, we have a, a, quite a variety of different breeds here. Beautiful Holstein here. 
Red Holstein, right? Air sure. Okay, my bad. I'm not a biologist or a farmer. These are actually Ayrshire's. Now, we have a young gentleman here who's willing to be on camera. We're going to talk to him here. How you doing, sir? I'm Paul Campbell. Well, I'm very nice to meet you, sir. And your name is? Dakota Kerbison. Dakota Kerbison. Yes. And you want to tell us about your animal here that you've had for the fair? Yes. Um, actually, this is uh, my brother's calf. But okay. He's uh, from Hereford. His mom was a Holstein, and his dad was a... Was a Harford, and it came out of Fort Harford. Wasn't that so funny, guys? Oh, <laughs> oh, and he's very—he's very soft, and he's very friendly. <laughs> now, how old is this? She is about, um, I think, three months, four. Only is about three or four months old. Very healthy animal. Very nice. He's a nice looking scare, and walks just fine. So, have you already had the the judging for for your animals yet? Uh, no. Tomorrow at 2, they're going to actually have the competition for some of the cows. So, I don't want to get behind him in case he gets spooked. I've been kicked by cattle. It's not fun. He will not kick whatsoever. <laughs> now, Dakota, I really appreciate it. What else you got to show us? Um, we have uh, three more here. We have a, uh, They're just eating right now. They're sweet feed, but this is a big belly. He is a limousine cross with a Hereford. And, uh... He's a little mad, mad right now, but <laughs> Obviously, Dakota's a lot more comfortable around these animals than I am, but he's probably grew up around them. <laughs> and uh, this is my calf. This is my alternate. Uh huh. And the other one here, Baby Billy, that was my brother's alternate. Right. Now, this is my uh, Angus. He's an IP here. He is uh, a black Angus. Right. And he's about uh, four months. Okay, about a four or five month old black Angus cat here. Okay, gorgeous animal. Nice, very well filled out. Very healthy animals. They're, they're remarkably soft and clean and well cared for. You've done a fine job with them. Thank you very much. We have one more though. Okay. This is a red. Cheese and fat. I was sitting there eating cheese and said, one dropped on the floor, I came right over. <laughs> <laughs> and as you see now, he is trying to strangle me. Now, what breed is this? He is a uh, limousine. A limousine. And he has the same, he is a week younger than him here. He's my first cat. Now, these three little guys are more interested in eating than they are in watching the camera here, folks. So, sorry about that, but there's really no convincing them otherwise. They got their face in the food dish, and that's all they're interested in. But very healthy and well cared for animals. Beautiful. I really wish you well, Dakota. I hope you win. And thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Appreciate your time. I hope this you. Absolutely. Oh, the joys of growing up in an agriculture community, folks. It is soaking wet out there, and the lighting's horrible, but everybody seems to be in a pretty good mood. And we've moved over here now to another barn where we have a lot of the goats and some llamas on display. Alpacas, I've been corrected. They are alpacas, they are not llamas. At any rate, this was not something you would have seen at the fair when I was the age of some of these young folks, but now it is something that is raised and competed here at the Croswell Agricultural Fair. So let's take a look. Oh, you wanna tell me about alpacas, ladies? Tell me about, you, know, you corrected me that these were alpacas and they were not llamas. What is the difference between an alpaca and a llama? Well, there's the size difference is the main one. And then, like, llamas will spit at the humans. Right. And alpacas, they'll only spit at each other. I see. You only get a crossfire if they're spitting at each other. I see. In the middle. Now, I, you, you, here we actually do have some ribbons that these young ladies have taken. They've placed, they, I gather the judging has already taken place. We didn't have the alpaca show. Those are some of the goat ribbons. Okay, these are actually from the, some, of you, some of your goats. But this is some of what I was talking about earlier about they come here every year and they compete for a particular place of who has the best in show. Amazing how long the necks on these animals are. 
look a little surprised all the time, but really pretty well cared for animals. And all kinds of goats that I don't recognize the breeds. The, the white one's an Angora. Okay, so we do have an Angora goat over here nestled down. And a couple of pygmy goats. The pygmy goats are the meat goat and the Angora is a hair goat. Right. Yes, they actually raise the Angora goats to make uh, the, the, the fabric, also called Angora, typically used for sweaters, very soft, very expensive material. And they will loom, spin and loom that wool to make garments. It's really, really nice material. Wow. I see in that pen it's mainly the baby pygmies. Mm -hmm. This is an adult. They're just adorable. I, I, I prefer my big over Hasleys. <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> You can see some folks really, really get into it. They she's down here with the, just a goat on her. <laughs> Perfectly at ease, and the goat seems quite happy too. A, 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 couple, a couple of us will actually fall asleep in our pens and sleep with our goats. Oh, is that right? Well, yeah, yeah. You get you so used to being with your animals. Here's somebody that's quite eager to say hi. Please don't bite me. <laughs> you see, some of them are actually quite gregarious. They're very eager to be very tactile with, with humans. It, it, like any animal, some are and some aren't. Now what do we have here? Oberhasley, a milking goat. An Oberhasley? Oberhasley. Oberhasley. It's a Swiss breed. Okay, there's one I'm not familiar with, folks, but maybe some of you are. Do you need some of my... And she says these are a goat that, for milk production. <laughs> they got such beautiful, sweet, big eyes. Don't you? They got sweet eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how nicely cared for these animals are. They're so beautifully clean and healthy and well rounded out. Really, really very nice. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate your time. If it wasn't raining, I would show you the boar, which is another meat breed. Mm -hmm. But it's raining and it's cold outside. I dig it. Right now we're just milking the goat to get the milk out so that she can stay in milk production longer. And also feed babies. And feed babies goats. <laughs> the breed that we're milking right now are called Hagenbergs. They are one of the eight dairy breeds that there are. Hey. How much milk do you usually get at a milking? Um, depends on the size of the goat and how good their udders are. Like, Carm, she gives us like two buckets, but I raise up Nigerian dwarfs, which are the miniature breeds. And they give my one that I'm milking right now, she's been giving me four cups of milk. And that's a gallon every two days. And that's all, quite a bit for a Nigerian breed to produce. You can take over hand. Can you tell me what you do with the milk? Well, Did you, you see can, that baby that's showing on you? You can use it to feed the babies. You can drink it. You can make it into cheese. You can make it into soap. You can make ice cream with the milk. Pretty much do a lot of things with different milk. Well, the goat, he's not 
right now. Her name is Gabby. And the one I'm milking is Fancy. She'll get happy. She's almost done. She's not producing as much as she, she was because we're milking out already. earlier about how we show goats, she, we had this class called Best Udder, and it's showing how good their udder is, and as I recalled, she got first place in Best Udder, and what place did Tansy get? Do you need me to go? What place did she get? Sorry, you want me to jump back? Second Well, she got fifth place, but the Nigerian I had up here, Game got second place over a lot of the big goats. Can put her away, please? And. Joy, one side is bigger done. than the other. Zoe told me to, okay? She's not done. Then you look her. She was done when I got more than that. So we'd like to thank you for joining us here in the real United States. We hope you've enjoyed this short episode of the Croswell Fair, the 130th annual Croswell Agricultural Fair. We hope you'll pick, subscribe, and join us for future episodes if you haven't already. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. We love hearing from all of you. We'll try to get back to all of you as soon as we possibly can. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>